everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Rachel, I'm a first year dental student at King's College London and this is the first episode of my tooth morphology series. Starting with the premolars, because the premolars, this may surprise you, these are actually the easiest teeth to learn about and I can cover them very very quickly. So hopefully this should help your revision if you're in my year and you, know, you can't remember what these teeth what the anatomical features of these teeth are and um, the identification test is coming up um, and you don't have time to go to the Gordon Museum and revise it all so I will be covering it all for you in a snappy, eloquent, hopefully, manner and hopefully to make this fun for you. I really love tooth morphology so this is a nice little outlet for me to practice my speaking and practice discussing the, uh, the anatomical features of these teeth and just help with revision. So let's get on with the video! Just a brief overview for you, uh, these are often called bicuspids, which is actually a slight misconception, a bit like a racial stereotype, when in fact the lower second premolars in fact have three cusps, they're uh, tricuspids. So that's quite interesting to know. Another detail for you is that the first premolars are generally sharper than the second, because they're more for tearing, whereas the second premolars are more for grinding. And lastly, a few dates for you, crown completion date is about six years old, roughly, and uh, the eruption date is about 12 years old, or 10 to 12, which is quite useful if you're looking at an x-ray and you'd like to age a patient. The fact about the crown being completed at six years old is quite key in uh, helping you identify a six-year-old's dentition, because you're probably aware that the first permanent molar comes through at six years old, so you'd recognise those two pieces of evidence when looking at an x-ray. So there's four facts about the upper first premolar which I'd like to share with you. The first one being the about the canine fossa on the mesial side of the tooth. This is a very easy depression to recognise. Knowing this will also enable you to distinguish between the first and second premolars. The second point is knowing the occlusal view of the upper first premolar. Just being familiar with it, uh, this includes the straight fissure across. Um, the number of cusps, so two, hence why they're generally, these teeth are generally referred to as bicuspids. And lastly, that the palatal tip is shifted slightly mesially. So I'll go over these now in more detail. On the buccal surface of the tooth, you can see two developmental depressions. That actually splits the cusp up into three sections, or three lobes. The mesial lobe is in fact the smallest of the three, and the distal cusp slope is shorter than the mesial cusp slope. That's an interesting feature because this is the one of the only permanent teeth that has this feature. For example, in the canines, the distal cusp slope is longer, um, and that's true for many of the other teeth. This is a very minor detail. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, don't worry about it at all. Probably down to my fault being a poor explainer. <laughs> now if we take a lingual view of the tooth, we can see that the lingual cusp is actually smaller than the buccal cusp, which is an easy feature to remember. It's smaller in terms of its mesiodistal width and its cervical occlusal height. Now looking occlusally, we can see that it's wider at the buccal side and narrower at the palatal side. The tooth is egg-shaped or oval-shaped in outline. There's a straight fissure across, two well-defined cusps, and the tip of the palatal cusp is shifted slightly mesially. So obviously, knowing the placement of the palatal cusp will enable you to determine between left and right, However, there's an easier way of doing it, which is using the canine fossa, that mesial depression on the tooth. And to further back that up, you can see a very small mesial groove, which is characteristic of the upper first premolar. And that's the upper first premolar done. Now moving on to the upper second premolar, there's no canine fossa for obvious reasons. It's not next to a canine. However, in almost every other regard, this tooth is pretty much identical, very, very similar to the previous tooth. I'll just run over these details again for you. Oval in shape, the buccal side is wider, narrower at the palatal, there's a very small mesial groove, the fissure is present on the occlusal surface, and the palatal cusp is again shifted slightly mesially. So the placement of the palatal cusp would be one of your main ways to determine between left and right. Uh, the only other evidence you'd have to back that up would be the placement of the mesial groove, but usually using the palatal cusp will be suffice. This is often true of all of the teeth, that the roots point distally. Um, I wouldn't always rely on that though. And one other point about the roots is that they're generally single rooted. Um, you can find double rooted premolars. So now moving on to the lower premolars. Again, these are very similar to the uppers. They have very marked buccal curvature, where the cusp is split up into three lobes again. 
generally single rooted, occasionally two roots, as I just mentioned. And because these are mandibular teeth, the upper teeth tend to push them inwards slightly, so they do overhang the tongue, and you can see that by viewing the teeth lingually. The lingual cusp is actually a lot smaller, but the most striking difference to look for in these teeth is that they do have a different occlusal view. Instead of having two cusps and a ridge, as we did in the uppers, we have two cusps which are joined by a ridge and either side of that are two fossae. The slightly larger fossa is placed distally and the slightly smaller fossa is placed mesially and again the tip of the palatal cusp is, plated, is placed mesially. These are also much more circular in outline and that should be enough evidence to help you identify the lower first premolar. So that's it guys, three quarters of the way there, making very good progress here. Our last tooth to, to discuss today is the lower second premolar, which has the unique feature of having two lingual cusps. So this is what breaks the lower second premolars from the rest of its family. In fact, it is not a bicuspid, it is a tricuspid. Out of the two lingual cusps, the slightly larger one is placed mesially, so that's how you can identify between left and right. But then again, as I mentioned with the previous tooth, the features are very similar to the uppers. You have the uh, marked curvature, you have a larger buccal cusp, and you have your smaller lingual cusps, two of them in this case, inward leaning towards the tongue and a more rounded occlusal surface. And there you go, that's the premolars completed. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, then please leave a like, please subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, any other videos you'd like me to uh, do, any more revision. If you have any advice on how I could have improved filming this video, I'm quite new at using um, video editing and filming myself, so it's it feels very out of the ordinary for me to be doing this. I'm not used to talking to a camera at all, and then trying to integrate clips from my own notes and online. But yeah, let me know if you want me to make any more of these. This was actually really fun to record, so uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot, bye.